We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We'll shout out your praise. God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet We'll shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet We'll shout out your praise Oh, oh, oh We'll shout out your praise Forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing with us. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. Centered service this morning. We're so glad you're here. Um, thought I would try starting out a little different today, see what happened. I hope you guys uh, caught on to that song a little bit. I know it was new, but it's a great song. Great words, um, great message. So a couple of announcements before we sing our next song. Um, there is a golf tournament coming up, which I enjoy very much. I don't know. How many of you guys play golf? But uh, let me grab this. It says this is the uh, 2022 Faith Seekers Class 18th Annual Golf Tournament. It's at Lexington Golf Club, Saturday, September the 10th. It's a 1.30 p.m. shotgun start. Four-player captain's choice tournament, 55 a person. That includes lunch, their prizes, for first and second place in two flights. So looking for teams, players, and also whole sponsors, which 
a whole sponsor is a hundred dollars. Um, it's for a great cause, so uh, tell your friends, family, neighbors. For more for more information, uh, you can contact Donald Hamilton or Chris Michael. Do you guys want me to give your numbers right here, or you want to just? All right, so it's in your bulletin. Um, their phone numbers are there, and uh, sounds like a good time. So hopefully you guys will all find a team and make a team and come out and play and support. And uh, so another another uh, neat thing that uh, came out of a, a meeting that I was actually part of, but I wasn't part of this necessarily, but this is really neat. It's uh, for 9-11, I uh, wanted to do, it was suggested to do something to to kind of commemorate that terrible event that happened in our country. But uh, so it, we're titling it, Where Were You? Um, as a way to remember the events of 9-11, we'll be sharing our memories of the day. So on your tables, there are some note cards. And what, what we would like for you to do is use those index cards, write a brief note about where you were, um, Maybe what you felt, kind of what, maybe what what God did in your life from that feeling. Um, just a little story about it on your on your note card there. Um, we some of your memories may be shared during the service on 9/11. Um, others will be placed on a bulletin board between the sanctuary and the fellowship hall. It'd be neat to cover that whole bulletin board with memories. Um, you can leave the cards in the classrooms or place them in the offering plate during the service so uh, yeah that's pretty neat so don't do it right now because we're going to sing a song but maybe take them home or during the offering or after after the service you can you can jot those notes down think about it a little bit and, um, think about how that affected you so let's stand together please So I'm awake after that first song. I hope you guys are. I don't know. It woke me up. So. Uh, we're going to sing Christ Be Magnified. We sang it last week. Um, hopefully you guys remember it, but uh, you'll catch on fast if you don't. We're creation. Suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south And east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing His name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We'd hear Christ be magnified, singing, "No, oh, Christ be magnified." Let His praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. When every creature finds its inmost melody and every human heart its native cry then in one in raptured hymn of praise we'll sing Christ be magnified singing no oh, Christ be magnified, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified 
time in the service, I want to, we want to kind of pause and give you guys the opportunity to um, give back to God from the gifts and blessings that he's given you. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our, our church family. Thank you for bringing us here safely today. Father, thank you for taking an interest in us, for loving us, for for taking care of us all through the week, Father, for meeting our needs. Father, I just pray that, uh, that today as we think about that and as we worship you in response to your goodness, Father, I just pray that uh, you will multiply these gifts that we give back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Father. Give our, give our church wisdom to use these gifts to glorify you, Father, and we truly do pray that that you will be magnified in our lives, Father, that, uh, that you will be glorified through our church, through our lives, through our families, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.
What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater powerful name. What a powerful name. The name that holds all the power. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear what you have to say today. So we just pray that uh, as our pastor comes forward to speak what you've laid on his heart, Father, I pray that you open our hearts and our ears to hear the message that, that you would have us hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 8 is the text and begins reading with verse 22 through 26. I want to say to you that this is such a progression of spiritual growth in the eyes of the disciples and in their life. And I say to you that the spirit, our, our spiritual life is a continued work of grace. It's God continuing to move us on to look more and more like Him. So Mark chapter 8 is the text. If you would stand again in reverence for the reading of God's Word, if you would. Mark chapter 8, beginning with verse 22. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. 
When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus went in, in, sent him home saying, Don't even go into the village. This is the Word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, open our eyes, O Lord, that we might see glimpses of truth Thou hast for us. Lord, help us to see You. Help us on our journey. And may we receive You. Receive sight. As You peel back the stuff from our life. And I ask that you'd help me as I preach today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Like I was saying, do you remember this old song back when I was young? It said, I can see clearly now the rain has come. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. How many of you remember that? Man, I love that song. Who, who sung that? You remember? Who? Johnny Taylor. Wow. What? Well, y'all, those of you who don't know it, just too young. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Well, we had good music. That's all I want to say about it. We had Johnny Cash, and y'all are just discovering old Johnny. Well, that's right. Our eyes are open, not by rain, my friends, but by the grace, the very grace and power of God. In the passage I just read to you, Jesus encounters a man who I want to say to you is, is, is a recipient of grace, just like every sing, single one of us, recipients of grace. He, he's receiving grace, first of all, through other people. We don't know who these people are that brings this man to Jesus, but he's blind. No way he could come to Jesus on his own. No way could he find him, could he? I remember years ago... I. The way I used to spend my Sunday afternoons is I'd save up a few dollars and I'd go to Asheville and at 3.15 they had mid-Atlantic wrestling and it was the greatest sport that's ever been known to man. And we'd go at the Asheville Civic Center and see that. And I remember there was a man that they, oftentimes would be sitting in an old wheelchair outside the, the Coliseum as you'd come in and he'd be sitting there with a little cup or something for you to give him money. Because he was blind, there was no other way for him to make a living on his own, and that's what he would do. This man in the story, there's no way he could make a living on his own. There was no way. There wasn't social services to help him. There was nothing else he could do. So think about the ostracism he must have lived under. Think about uh, the, how people must have put him down. Think about how people... Uh, probably went to the other side to avoid having any kind of contact with this fella. But here some men have compassion on him and they bring him to Jesus. They had compassion. Do you have compassion on your fellow man, fellow woman? Do you have compassion on other human beings that you might be moved in some kind of fashion to help them? I want to say to you, these are friends of this man. You'd say, how do you know they're friends? Well, let me say this to you. If I'm going down the road and I run my car off in a ditch and I'm out there trying to get that car out of the ditch and you stop to help me and I've never seen you in my life, you've never seen me, but you take the time to stop to help me, you are my friend. You're my friend. And there was some kind of bonding that happened. And they brought what this mass of humanity, they bring him to Jesus. They bring him to him. He could not come on his own. He had to have a friend. And that's the way grace is, friends. God comes to us. God comes to us because we can't come to Him. He takes the initiative in our life. Always has, always will. Young or old today. You can't see unless God opens your eyes. You can't do it. You can't sit there today. Well, I'm going to open my eyes so I can see the Lord in a greater fashion. And I'm going to grow with Him. You can't just decide that. That's the Lord and His grace that has to do it. Now, you have to decide if you're going to be used by the Lord. The Lord can touch you. You've got the, the Lord doesn't force Himself on you. The Lord doesn't 
forces will on you. And then there's the story of compassion of Jesus. He doesn't refuse the man. They come to him, and what does Jesus do? It's, 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 it's kind of a side note, but Jesus takes him out of the village, it says. He takes him away from the other people. Three times in Mark's gospel already, we've seen the Lord taking people away from the crowds. Do you remember the first time we see it is Mark chapter 5, when Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, comes and tells Jesus about his daughter being sick. You remember the story? And by the time Jesus gets there, the young girl has died. And Jesus says, oh, wait a minute. Now, she's not dead. She's just asleep. Where's she at? They tell him the room she's in. And Jesus says that he sends everybody else away except a few of the family. And here's Jesus. There's another story. Jesus moves with compassion and he does it privately again. There's another story where this, this person couldn't see or they couldn't speak and they were deaf. They couldn't, they couldn't, let me get it right. There was another story. The person was, couldn't speak and was deaf. And so Jesus comes into this fellow's life and he takes him away from everybody else. Verse 40 of chapter 7. Takes them away from everybody else. And then this story. I want to submit to you that ours is a personal walk with God. Oftentimes what God's doing is public in our lives. But the real deep things that happen to us are privately. There are those times when we're driving to work. There are those times that we're away from our spouse. It's those times that we're asleep in the bed or cannot sleep at night and we're tormented and things are going on. Hey, folks, it may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you, trying to draw you to the Lord at night. So you need to go say, Lord, here I am, just like uh, uh, the young uh, Eli's uh, uh, Samuel. You need to say, Lord, here I am, and hear what the Lord is saying to you, because God may be speaking to you in the middle of the night as well. And so here the Lord is, is working in this person's life privately. Ours is a private relationship with God that's lived out publicly. Your Christian faith shouldn't always be private. You're to be a witness for the Lord. And so Jesus takes him to the side, and what's he do? I love, I, I love, I love the hygiene. He spits on the feller. That's good, isn't it? And throws his hand up on him. Oh, this ain't the world of COVID, is it? That have got all over Jesus. I, I love, I love it. I got to just say this because this has been dry. This has just been bugging me for a long time. We run around with masks, with a little paper mask on, run around with them because some mindless people said we need to do that and the same mindless people this past week said it doesn't work. What in the world happened? I'm just saying, just saying. This is what it reveals to me, how mindlessly we will listen to everybody else and follow the masses. And if I've noticed that, don't you think some other people have noticed how they can manipulate us too? Jesus wasn't manipulating. Jesus was touching a fellow who could not see. And he says, what do you see? And this is how we know at some point this guy could see before, because what does he say? Well, I, I see people, they look like trees walking around. Hey, there's no way he'd have known that if you hadn't seen at some point. Jesus reaches down again, lays hands on him. Let me say this to you. There's nothing like a touch. Nothing like a touch. There's folks that have been watching uh, online uh, forever in churches all over America, all over the world, to be quite honest. All I can say to you is there's nothing like the divine touch of God. There's nothing like the human touch that God uses. Is God calling you to be a human touch to somebody else? Is there other people in your sphere of influence that God is calling you to touch, to be the healing hands of Jesus? Because I think your hands are healing too. And you, we, we often don't do it because we don't reach out and offer ourselves to be that healing touch for Jesus. Do you have that heart of compassion? 
Jesus looked after that man, couldn't see plainly. What did he do? He touched him a second time. Was the Lord's power shortened? Was he not able to do that the first time? No, I think he's perfectly capable he could have done it the first time. Does God instantaneously save people? Absolutely he does sometimes. But other times it's, it's a continued work of grace. And in most people's life, it's that continued work of grace, that $5 word theologically that we use. Wesley called it sanctification, that walking to look closer and closer to look more like Jesus. That constant daily walk. Paul said it plainly. He said, I die daily. It's that constant denying to self. It's that, well, I've, I've given my life to the Lord. I'm trying to walk with you, Lord. And we realize we backed up, and here we go again. Lord, here I am on that trip, backpedaling. Lord, I need your help. And continue to try to walk forward with you. It's that constant work of grace. It's that beautiful dance of grace God's doing in our life. God using us. God touching us. God convicting us. God bringing us back home. God... God just loves us so much. God loves us so much that He won't allow us to go too far until He speaks again to us. Constantly drawing us back to Him. Isn't that, isn't that a marvelous love? Isn't that what God does? And He did it privately in these at least three times. Does He always do it privately? I, I couldn't say that. Most often it's private because ours is that private relationship of Him drawing us to Him, loving on us. My grandma used to work, use the word, and I love it. I love the word. She'd come here, honey, let me nuss on you a little bit. I love it. Have you ever, ever heard that word nuss? You didn't have Kathleen Wilson as your grandma. I hate it for you children. Come here, let me nestle. The Lord holds us close to Him. There is nothing you and I can do to be saved except to come to Him by faith. It is the grace of God, lest any of us would boast, Ephesians said. It's a gift. It's a gift. And the Holy Spirit speaking to us is a gift. This is a gift that Jesus offered that man that day as he pulls him aside from everybody else as he pulls him aside and the fellow begins to understand it's so symbolic do you see oh it looks like trees out there that's the way grace is come to the Lord well, what do you know about Jesus you don't know a whole lot right you're growing growing in grace it's stages of God pouring out his Holy Spirit upon you, getting what you can receive, getting what you'll accept. It's grace. All grace. Because He loves you. And that's the way it is in your life. What is God doing in your life now? And where is God leading you right now, do you think? Where, where do you think He is? Do you think He's just leading you to right here, that this is it? This is it, 2022, this is it. I would hope not, because there's so much more. But to get the more, we have to receive what he has for us. Uh, I, went to, I went to Gettysburg the other day, and I tell you what, uh, it's amazing to me, as you go a walk on that battlefield, over 60,000 men died over a three-day period of time from the north and the south. Well, no, no. Died or was wounded in a three-day period of time. The bloodiest war in the, civil, in the whole Civil War. Isn't that amazing? Over that three-day three period of time. And it's amazing that up to that point, General Lee controlled virtually every battle that was fought in that, in that great war. He commanded the battlefield. But it's, it's, it's weird that at Gettysburg, the whole tide would change. He had the mentality that if he could go up, up into the northern territory, 
of the United States, it would break the will of the American people. And they'd say, Lincoln, you've got to negotiate. We've got to end this war. And it was going that way. There was all kind of conflict. It, w it was believed that Lincoln wouldn't even get elected again. That's how bad it had got. But Gettysburg changed it all. And it happened from some strategic blunders that General Lee made. One you might have heard of, Pickett's Charge in the last day, literally sends uh, uh, the troops out on an open field to go up a hill to try to, to, to push the, the Yankees back. By every kind of military mind, it was foolishness. And you know what some say that happened? That Lee had too much pride. He had never been defeated up to that time, really defeated. He had had some setbacks, but no real big defeats. You know what happens in our life so often? We're filled with so much pride. We can't be the conquerors that the Lord wants us to be, folks. And we let that hinder us. You think, oh, I'm, I'm doing real good. Really? What else could you do if you'd surrender to the Lord? If you'd really surrender that that you're doing, that that's controlling you, that's, that, that, that's not pure, that that's not holy, and you give that to God, what could God do? What kind of scales could he pull back that you could see Jesus clear? Jesus wants to do so much more in our life. But we've got to be willing to do that. Yesterday, we, I, they, I understand it. How many of you were here yesterday at, at the big event outside? Raise your hand. It's a good part of you. I mean, we had a good time. There were 435 of our neighbors registered for that event. That's what we know of that registered. We know that there was a lot of other moms and dads that didn't register. There was a few kids that didn't get registered. We had a lot of our folks certainly didn't get registered, so we know there's probably uh, 550, 600 people easy here at that. But you know what? It was great to reach out to those neighbors and just love on them a little bit. It was just a good, safe place for them. It didn't really cost them anything. It was just good to love on them a little bit. But to me, what was just as precious was how we ministered to one another and we came together. Because usually, and what's happened here at our church, and it's not uncommon in every church, is we just do with our little groups. My little Sunday school class, my little group that does this, my little group that does that, and that's the way it is. But this was a completely different thing. No committee organized. It was just the act of the whole church coming together. That was absolutely beautiful. But that took some rent surrender on a whole lot of folks' parts. Because God can do so much when we surrender. Where are you at with the Lord? Where are you at with Him? Look at the text right quick. I'm wrapping it up. Look at verse 21. We didn't read that today. We read it last week. Do you remember Jesus has fed 5,000 on another occasion? He's fed 4,000 on another occasion. Last week we talked. They're, they're getting on the boat, and they go to talking among themselves. We don't, we don't have any bread ourselves. We don't have but like a loaf or something like that. And they're, they're wondering about how they're going to make it. And Jesus says to them, do you not remember how I fed the 5,000? How much did you have left over? Do you remember I fed the 4,000? you don't remember how much you had left over? And then he says to that, that they miss that he is the bread of life. They miss, they can't see who he is. The last words of the section we read last week, verse 21, he said to them, Do you still not understand? And then he moves into this section. Mark, Mark carries us on this journey. Just like the disciples were on the journey. You're no, you're no different than the disciples. We're on a journey of understanding who this Jesus is. And, and as we understand more and more how he is and who he is, we just love him more. It just, it's just that way it is. The more you know about him, the more you appreciate about him, the more you read, you just love him more. The more you walk with him and you struggle, you just love him more. You just love him because he's so faithful to you, right? Do you still not understand? And 
And then the man's eyes are opened, and he said, Don't you go back to that village. You go back to another place. You go a different way. That's what he's wanting to do for you. Can he open your eyes this morning that you might have glimpses of truth thou hast for me? Loom on me, Spirit of the living God. Let's pray together. Father, as we're in this place, there's some folks that got some uneasy feelings, just as I'm praying right now, that they're uneasy. God, we know that to be conviction. That's your Holy Spirit. I'm not doing it. I'm not manipulating them. They're feeling that. Holy Father, come breathe upon them. Wipe their eyes clean that they can see you, that they can go further in the journey with you. There's others, Lord, that are under conviction because they, they, they don't know you. They just don't, they do not know you. How wonderful it is that you love them. And you don't neglect them. No matter what they've done, no matter where they've been, no matter what they've thought, you love them. Thank you for that. Others, it's their, they know you, but they're not surrendering to you. They're walking in the ways of the world, some of them. Lord, through the power of your Spirit, transform and set us free. God, open our heart. And we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Would you stand? Maybe this morning, make that, make that seat right where you're at your altar this morning talk to the Lord about what we've talked about because you've been on a journey with me this morning what's getting in your way from seeing Jesus surrender to him surrender to him we're glad to have the Browns back with us this morning that's the Thanos' family we're glad to have them with us make them welcome back on the very back back there he's the one in the bright yellow shirt he can't run, he can't hide Thank y'all for coming. God bless you.
I am a child of God. Sing it. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. child of God. One more time. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and see. I am a child of God. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child. Amen. Amen. So, before we go, Annie's moving off to college this week, so if there are any singers among you, I'm going to need some help. I need singing. I need instruments. If there's anybody that can do any of that, please talk to me. I'd love to have some other folks involved. As much as I like to sing, it would be awesome if some of you guys could join in with me as well. Um, let's pray this morning. Again, don't tear anything down. Just have a little fellowship. Don't forget your cards there that uh, can write your, your mementos about 9-11. Um, I think that's really neat. It's going to be hanging up out there. It's going to be really neat. But let's pray this morning. Father, praying straight from your word. Ephesians 3 says... May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality. Father, that is my prayer this morning for each of these, Father. Just indwell us, Father, in our innermost being, in our personality, so that, so that you shine forth through us. Father, uh, you told us to be in the world, but not of it, Father. So I just pray that, that as we go out into the world, that, that you will shine through us, Father. That you will, you will bless each one here today, deep inside, Father, so that it, it doesn't go away. Thank you for bringing us together today, Father. Just, I pray that you will just go with us out into the world, lead, guide, and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.